All right, so here we go. We got a new tease today of the buried biomes we will be exploring in Diablo 4. Plus, new confirmations about how scaling works. Today, they advertised a feature that's pretty surprising related to this, especially in co-op play. Also, will we be seeing more beta tests before launch? That's a great question. And we've got further confirmations about certain gameplay mechanics for bosses, champion monsters, and more. This is going to be great for theory crafting in the future. And will they be adjusting the dungeon reset button ever? Will we see that return? That is a great question. But let's get into this. First and foremost, this got me totally hyped today seeing this out on Twitter. An official post here from the Diablo Twitter account. It says, from the fetid swamps of Hauser to the verdant forests of Scotsland, the vast world of sanctuary is yours to explore in Diablo 4. Man, we only got to explore the beginning. There are going to be so many different biomes that we will be discovering together. I cannot honestly wait to get to the desert biome and of course, see what awaits us there. Now, we have this one right here. It says this, can someone confirm? So when you are playing co-op in the new Diablo, who gets the campaign progress when playing in co-op? The session host or do all people get it? But whoever has done it before just doesn't get rewards. A little confused. And there's a lot of details here, so let's take a look. Rod Ferguson says this, the host of the party owns the state of the world. If you're aligned, AKA at the same point in the quest line, then you all progress. If there is a misalignment, like you invited someone new halfway through, then they won't get the story quest progress XP until they catch up. Now it goes on to say this. So if you're playing with a group that's not committed to playing together, it's always best to have the player with the least amount of progress to be the host. And one of my favorite features is the fact that the game scales individually for players. So quest line progress aside, you can have a level one and a level 30 playing together and having fun because the game scales for them and the new player doesn't have to hide in the corner. I love this. That is such a great feature. But you know, all in all, it seems like it would be wise to have a group that would be on the same page if you are wanting to experience the single player campaign together to kind of progress uh simultaneously however as you can see there are options here so if you can't do that you really don't have to worry too much about that with this game all right let's keep going so we have this one right here from alan who says no it's safe to uninstall the beta from xbox or is there going to be another beta before launch lol and rod ferguson says only 18 days left no more beta tests evil smiley face <laughs> i'm just kidding Man, I want another beta. I thought for sure, for some reason in my mind, I had in my mind the server slam was going to go until Monday noon, like the previous open beta. I was so bummed to find out that it was ending on Sunday. I was like, oh no, what? So anyway, moving on, we have this one right here from Feta Hummus, who says, hi, and thanks for all the work with the game and the community. Do bosses count as elites too? Asking for theory crafting builds with plus damage to elites. Thanks a lot. And we have a response from Joe Shelley, who says, yes, boss and champion monsters do count as elite. So now you know when actually going in and theory crafting, uh, you know, certain bonuses versus certain type of creatures, you can clearly see that now. Uh, yes, bosses count as elites. All right. Furthermore, we have this one from Hog, who says, can you clear up if poisoning is considered a crowd control mechanic in Diablo 4? And Joe Shelley says this, poison is not considered a crowd control effect on its own. It is a damage over time effect. However, if you had an effect like enemies you poison are also slowed by 20%, then enemies you poisoned would be considered CC'd due to the slow component. And we have a thank you for that one. That is great to know. So some excellent information there going into further boss battles as well. Now we have Sendo721 who says, hey Rod, sorry if this was answered, I'm trying to theory craft builds for powers that increase damage to enemies that are CC'd. How does this work for bosses and world bosses when they are staggered? Is that a constant state of crowd control? Thanks. Rod Ferguson Page is the man, Joe Shelley, who says when a boss in Diablo 4 is staggered, they are treated as afflicted by all CC types. For example, if you have 10% increased damage to slowed enemies, you will deal 10% more damage while the boss is staggered. This applies to other effects conditioned on the target being crowd controlled too. Awesome. Thank you. So the more, you know, I hope that helps you guys out in the future, of course. But then we have this post right here it says I'm refunding. 
other purchases so I can buy this game. <laughs> Pulled a fast one there. Now, mentioning refunds, we have a PSA about that one as well. It says, PSA, no one gives a crap if you are refunding. <laughs> I just found those two posts uh, kind of funny. But anyway, we have more about the dungeon reset button, which was removed, as you guys remember. But will something like that ever return? So we have this Reddit post here. It says, about dungeon auto reset. I get that dungeon reset button was removed to prevent players from abusing it. However, I can't say I was a fan of auto reset either. For example, I got full inventory just before the boss and teleported back to the town to unload, upgrade some stuff, and stash them gems. When I got back, the dungeon had already reset. I think they should have left that button to manually reset dungeons, but should have just added a cooldown. And there are some replies here. It says, my issue was not knowing what I could go back and when farming one, just sitting outside waiting. I was alt tabbing to track time. I wish there was like a chat message that says dungeon has reset or something and a small timer would also do wonders. So there needs to be some sort of feedback from the dungeon that you are in or were in previously that it has reset. You should get that in a message or something like that. So you're not playing this guessing game as to, hey, when is this dungeon gonna reset? Let me know what type of feedback you guys think the dungeons need for this type of feature. Um, yeah, sound off. All right, furthermore, we have this one right here. Check it out. It says, stop complaining about Ashava. The game is fine. This one comes from Can Carnage uh, 13. I thought it was Car Carnage 13. Now it says, I really hope these bums don't convince Blizzard to lower the difficulty of the game. I'll start with some tips. If you're having trouble learning the mechanics, go on YouTube, and I'm sure there's some videos of people explaining what you need to do to kill Ashava. Change your... Build to single target focus damage. Focus on not dying first and look for small windows to do your damage. Personally, once you learn this boss, she's actually quite easy. I hope I'm not the only one that's praying the world bosses get harder than just standing behind them and you win. Now, world bosses are meant to be difficult, people. It's supposed to be a challenge. Too many people com coming straight from Diablo 3 and moaning about the game being too hard and the world boss being too hard. I hear what you're saying. Absolutely, they're supposed to be challenging, you know? You're supposed to play in a group of synergized players, in my mind. That's kind of one of the big efforts here behind world bosses. I think one of the things that would alleviate some of the problems we are seeing with world bosses is perhaps a level requirement, a minimum level requirement for going into a world boss. That's all I'm asking for. Now, furthermore, if we get into this, it says, I don't like using YouTube for these fights unless I absolutely have to. So the first time I fought her, I got killed enough times I had to go back to town to repair because I didn't repair my items before the fight. I had to die like 10 times before I learned all the mechanics. This is a good thing. After I learned the mechanics, it was a cakewalk. We even killed him the first time when I died, died a bunch, but just barely. After the first time fighting him, I only died a total of once. The other two times I fought him, it is possible. This kind of reminds me of mechanics from like Elden Ring Dark Souls where you kind of live, die, Repeat, learn your lesson, go back stronger, and you are really rewarded for your efforts, for really paying attention, learning. That's something I absolutely love. And I agree, I don't like to go to YouTube videos often and go to tips. I like to try to figure out, figure it out as much as possible for myself. Then we have, it says, I know a lot of people complaining are coming straight from Diablo 3, and I think Diablo game is supposed to be easy, but I was hoping for the opposite, and so far it feels good. I honestly hope... The deeper you get in the game, the harder it gets and the harder the mechanics get. I think that's exactly how it's going to be. I'm not going to be surprised if that's the case at all. All right, so let's keep going. We have this one right here. It says the difficulty of this last beta made it a lot more fun. Sure, Ashava was tough, but I spent nearly three hours trying to clear Cardragon Stronghold on World Tier 2. Even when my rogue was like 75% legendary, it was still incredibly hard to survive. Every boss felt challenging. I used probably 50 times as many potions during this weekend than the last two. I'm really looking forward to Capstone Dungeons, which I assume will be similar to that level of difficulty. Speaking of difficulty, by the way, I noticed that if you get more into your passive skills on your skill tree, that is becoming more and more important compared to the last previous betas. If you ignore that sort of thing, good luck. I highly recommend you guys checking out what's going on with your more passive skills in the skill tree. They have done me wonders, especially when playing as the Barbarian. I mean, the change there is huge. 
Also, we have this one. Props to Diablo 4 for actually being well optimized on PC in the sea of AAA titles that have launched on PC this year with abysmal performance and at times downright broken launches. I was really worried about how this game was going to run on my older rig, but I have not had any frame drops or even stutters really happy with this. And they've been very adamant about replying to you all out on Twitter about DLSS updates, even FSR, that sort of thing. So yes, they're very in tune to the PC community. They aren't really neglecting you guys at all. And they're not neglecting anyone, I feel. I feel like on every platform, it's been pretty much even, which is great to see. And yes, it has been a sea of horrible PC releases. I'm looking at you, Jedi Survivor. Dear God, what happened? Now we have this one. F for all those who didn't get the Ashava Mount Trophy, including me. <laughs> Yeah, there's going to be no other chance, but hey, don't worry, don't panic, because there's going to be a ton of different mount trophies in the game. And I think at the beginning, you're going to see a bunch of Ashava trophies at first, but then people are going to be like, hey, I got to show off my other trophies. There's going to be bigger and better, I think, mount trophy trophies as we get into the end game. Yeah, so things are going to be changing with that. So if you did miss out, don't worry about it too much. It's not the end of the world. Now, it says gems shouldn't take up slots in the inventory once again. By far the most discussed thing right here. We got very limited space already. Gems should not be categorized like materials that won't take up any space. And of course, the previous request was more about a another gem tab, you know, a separate tab. However, this is a little bit different. You guys actually don't want gems to take up any inventory uh, space. It should be its own thing outside of inventory. I hear what you're saying there so that it's easier to manage and you have more storage. You do know at the very least the gems are going to be getting their own tab, but that does that mean that's going to be separate from the inventory? Probably not. So this is something that the team would have to reply on. I can't speculate on what they would do with that. Now we have this as well. Is it just me or is this potion system the best it ever was? Personally, it just feels good and quite balanced having four potions and having them drop from enemies instead of just have one potion on a cooldown it makes for a more dynamic and engaging game. It's a very simple system, but I feel like they just nailed it. I'm actually impressed. I love it. I think it works very well, especially in boss fights like, like you're seeing here. You have actual feedback on the boss's health bar, which tells you when that boss will be dropping potions next go around. I just think that's so cool. You're kind of working your way to that and seeing if you could survive to that point. It almost feels like sub-bosses within a boss battle, if that is a thing. Now, we have this one right here. Diablo 4 devs knocked it out of the park with this game. I'm upgrading my pre-order to the higher version so I can get it a few days earlier. Going to be missing not playing it for the next 21 days or so. Yeah, you know, I thought to myself when I woke up today, I'm going to hop into Diablo 4. <laughs> and then I realized, damn it, that's not actually going to be happening. I was totally bummed. Yeah, another outcry is this one. Please, please, please give us an option to turn off the status text right here. I also would like to see the option. I know this is kind of weird, but when I use my uh, challenging cry, challenging shout, I really want an option to like shut off all the skulls. There has to be some other way of knowing that the enemies are aggro towards me. Um, that's something that I would like to be adjusted because all you see is just like an influx of tons of like skull <laughs> icons across this beautiful artwork so i think they need to provide more options in regards to uh, what's going on with the ui in that regard let me know if you agree with that or not yeah see there they go there's tons of skulls which i don't mind in that case but sometimes it's like it's overwhelming i would like to see if they could provide at least an option all right so check this out right here my most recent video was called the devs confirm big change they actually did it necromancer staying one patch and more Yes, so if you did miss that video, check it out. But what you do need to know is the Necromancers are getting a buff for their skellies to basically return back to normal. So that's great news. So what did you guys have to say about my most recent video? Let's get into this. Remember, leave a comment down below. It could end up in a future video. You never know. So we have this one right here from Blaine Greener who says this or Grainer. The dev team is absolutely killing it. They are responding to nearly all concerns and addressing them or explaining why they are the way they are. Also quickly putting in balance tuning and I love it. That's the thing, you know, with the necro adjustments that they made even during the server slam, they did that as a hot fix. They didn't have to go through and get all of the manufacturer's approvals. That is you know, like Sony and Microsoft and 
go through Steam. They just did it from the back and server side, which I absolutely love, which means they will be able to adjust things very quickly on the fly for the launch of the game. That's going to be awesome. Furthermore, we have this one from Leslie who says, they did such a great job with Diablo 4. The aesthetic storyline and the mechanics enthralled me right away. 100% agree. Another thing I'm addicted to is the story. I cannot wait to see what happens next with that one. Now we have Zachary Miller who says, just an FYI, if you don't like the makeup of your Shava party, you can leave the zone and re-enter. Doing so will refresh the instance that you're in and give a new party. Now let's expand this. It says, hopefully you can get into a better one. I did this with my Flay plus Rend Rupture Barbarian build and managed to clear World Tier 2 on my second attempt. Nice. Also remember that you can check other people's equipment through the emote wheel to better gauge your chances of success. Make sure you get to the world boss zone early so you have time to do all this and make last minute tweaks to your skills at the time if needed. Hopefully this info helps you out and happy hunting folks. Yeah, you know, I recommend getting to the uh, world boss as well even like 10 minutes beforehand. The reason why I say this is you can really get in depth with your character if you're kind of unsure about certain things and be like, oh crap, I didn't repair. Or, you know, oh, maybe I should upgrade this weapon or do this. You have that a lot of time to really dig in and mess around. Of course, you're not gonna do that every time if they're 10 minutes early, but I think it helps to be prepared. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned here for more Diablo 4 news and updates have you guys covered and I will see you all next time. Take care.